Today I am in a forest in Northern California and I'm going to try to capture a mole. And the goal is to do this without using any traps or shovels or anything that isn't just my hands. And today's video is dedicated to anyone who follows me on Instagram. If you do, you'll know why. Right here is the end of a mole run, a surface tunnel. Um, it passes there. I'm not sure where it goes. It may go a little bit underground to connect to those mounds and it comes out here and it goes back somewhere there but the reason I'm not too concerned about the mounds that go that direction is because if you can see here the dirt is starting to dry out on the top and over there there's very little dry dirt see like it's all 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 the dirt is fairly dark and then here where it's older you can see a lot of it is drying out so if that is newer and it comes to a point then that likely indicates that this is the direction that the mole is going. And so if I just wait here for some movement, then I can put my foot uh, in the ground, in the tunnel, and uh, block off the, the mole and hopefully take it out. But I have to wait here for quite a long time. I decided that I'm gonna push that little piece right there and this piece down with my foot. That way it'll be very easy to identify when the mole is passing through. As you just saw there, there was movement underground. The mole was pushing the ground up. But the issue with trying to catch a mole in this kind of area is the mounds are very ambiguous. There's no telling where anything goes here. It's all sort of jumbled up. So if I plant my fingers down there or my feet or anything like that, uh, it could have any number of places to go. So um, since it was active here and I haven't seen it move for a bit, this little piece right here, looks like it's it's very um it's not isolated but it connects two pieces of the system so it may not be a bad idea to um flatten this and then watch it come by and depending on which direction it goes i can block off two ends and it shouldn't be too complicated to uh, catch them all So I'm not sure if it's a good idea to talk or not. You can see the mole is moving down there. I don't know if you can uh, hear me or not, but anyway, that's the part I flattened. And he's still moving around in the area where I can't really isolate him. And I think this little branch here is one that is a little similar to that one in the way that I can flatten it and there's no other holes that lead to it. And if I flatten that, either way the mole goes, I'll be able to catch it. That's just in theory. All right, here's the deal. I just saw the mole move again in this area. You can see this little piece of asphalt is kind of a reference point. It's just been moving around there the entire time. There it goes again. I think I'm just going to go for it because um, this little piece doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't really have any escapes. So if I somehow screw this up, I don't think the mole has many places to go. I may be completely wrong about that, um, but it, it's worth a try because I'm running out of daylight here. The mole's moving there. You can see it's after that worm. It's gonna eat that worm right there. I just took it, it's eating it now. That worm was running or crawling or whatever, whatever worm does for its dear life, but just got sucked into the abyss. By the way, I don't even think, since I have everything blocked off here, that I need to necessarily, uh, you know, plunge my hands down in the, in the dirt or anything. I think since these are blocked off that I can start uncovering the dirt and the mole should just be there. I mean, it'll try to run and whatnot, but um, as soon as it reaches the blocked ends, it'll have to push it back up, and that'll give me the time to do what I need to do. The mole's moving over there. Can't let him get away. I don't know if he just got away or not. The mole was uh, pushing up the dirt. There he is. There he is.
Found him. And he's mad at me. Of course he is. And this is our uh, broad-footed mole right here. Very cute little guy, in my opinion. I don't know. Most people probably think moles are quite ugly. I put the mole in this tub of dirt and it's moving right there. You can see the uh, the dirt going up. I'm keeping it in here with the dirt instead of just no dirt because that way it'll be much less stressed out. Um, and I should be able to pick it up. There it is. And I'm assuming most of the people who are watching this video have never touched a mole in their life. Um, if you ever get the chance to, it is the softest thing that you will probably ever feel in your life. They're extremely soft, softer than velvet. Speaking of handling moles, if you ever get the opportunity to touch one or catch one, it is very important to handle them with care because one, they bite, and two, they're pretty fragile, even if their uh, front end with their paws is very strong for digging through dirt. And regarding their bite, it does hurt quite a bit. Um, I haven't been bitten personally, but I know some people who have. Uh, they have very sharp teeth. And hantavirus, which is a very lethal virus with a high fatality rate, has been recorded in European moles. And for anyone who doesn't know a whole lot about moles and other small mammals, uh, moles are not rodents. They come from the same order as um, hedgehogs and shrews. This is uh, one of three main mole species that we have here in California. And even though they do have eyes, moles are, are not blind, but uh, practically blind uh, in, in the way that they can only really see light. And my favorite mole fact is that they can eat um, over 70% of their own body weight every single day regularly. They have a really high metabolism along with their close uh, relative of the shrew and um, if they if they don't get enough to eat within a certain period of time like uh, a day or two they will die you can see here that it uses its little nose to probe around and it has very strong feet too if I touch him on the side he'll push me he whacks me whacks me with his foot all right here we go There you go. Very loud eater too. A lot of smacking noises. Crunching noises. By the way, I know I've been calling this mole a, a he quite often, but I'm pretty sure this is actually a female. A young one too. It's supposed to get uh, a bit larger than this. Uh, this is probably the smallest mole I've ever seen. Um, alive, at least. I've seen some pretty small shrew moles dead on the on trails before. But uh, yeah, this is a female. And the way I can tell is down to the nose, uh, she has the same color fur. Meanwhile, uh, on males, it's a bit lighter around the the nose, and I've only ever seen one male. All right, just once before I release it, I'm going to show you how it digs in soft soil, or loose soil, rather, uh, and then we'll see how it digs when I release it. We were just meters away from the, uh, the uh, system that this guy had dug, and now I'm releasing him here just so uh, we can actually see the making of the tunnels. And then he will make his way um, to his uh, other tunnels because it's between a bank and a road. It's been about five minutes since I released the mole and already we have a bit of distance here. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave this mole alone now. That is all for this video. Um, thank you if you watched till the end.